welcome to the Mindset Michelle TV show. We're so super, super excited for you to be joining us on yet another incredible and amazing episode. And today we have the wonderful and amazing Peter Solway. Hello, Peter. Hey, Michelle. Good to be here. It's so wonderful to have you on the show. And for those of you who may not be aware of who Peter is, Peter is the founder of Sales Solutions, a B2B sales coach and sales solutions business. Now, Peter started off in the wonderful world of tennis, but also had a, has had an interesting career in that he had two burnouts, not one, but two before the age of 30. Now, this sounds like a really, really fascinating journey from tennis to having some health challenges to now working in that B2B space and especially in sales, which is so pressurised. So, Peter, I'm fascinated. Please tell the audience who you are, how you came to be doing what you're doing and, and why you're passionate about what you do. That's a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start, I'll try and start at the beginning. So the reason I guess tennis comes into the mix is um, that was my life growing up, right? From 10 years old, I was like, I want to give this thing a crack, see how far I can get. I played on the, um, the International Junior Tour. I kind of did okay for a while, um, but I couldn't quite crack it into the higher ranks. But but what was happening during that was that the expense of um, going and, and traveling and playing and competing was, was really quite high and it wasn't something my parents... Uh, you know, uh, couldn't support very easily. So I looked at sort of starting my first business in order to sort of fund that. Um, and by the time, you know, things hadn't worked out with tennis, uh, I uh, had my own business and I was like, this is really cool and, and quite fun. And, and, and it kind of led me down this curious path of like, ah, putting all these puzzle pieces together and, you know, building something from the ground up. And that's really interesting. And it took me down this kind of business path right where I got involved in things and and naturally the role that I sort of tended to fit into was was the sales side of things right like I'm an extrovert with people that that's that type of things um you know so I got involved in in helping raise some money I went and you know raised some capital for one of the businesses that that, that I started from scratch um and always had this kind of sales flavor to it but I particularly got um involved in a sales leadership role when I joined a founder um, who literally had built a piece of technology and had a couple of customers, maybe a thousand or, or two thousand bucks in revenue, right? Like next to nothing, and helped build that from the ground up and really learn what it takes to go through figuring out how to take a product to market and sell it into a big, you know, corporate environment or sell it to other businesses. And and I guess that's kind of that's kind of been my journey is going through and, and working in various different businesses with this sales side of things and, and then really diving deeply into how do you go and build that first million dollars in revenue? How do you scale up from, from nothing? How do you, how do you figure out, you know, what, uh, who the right first salesperson is? How do you get those first few salespeople and build a sales function kind of out of nothing and, and, and going through that journey. So, which has led me to, to where I am today. Right. Um, uh, I now go and work with small businesses that are selling B2B. The founders kind of figured out something about sales, but they're like, how do I do the sales beyond me? How do I hire my first salesperson? How do I actually build a sales function? Or do I turn my technical or operational you know, team into a sales team? Give them, you know, you, you see it in a lot of the, the consulting firms and, and different other service-based industries out there um, where, you know, having that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the lawyer or the accountant or whoever going out there and, and building sales because, you know, yeah, the service is so interwoven. So that journey is where I come in and support. Um, your comments about the burnout, yes, um, you know, that's that's happened to me twice. The first time was just by getting on the bandwagon of working too hard and, um, you know, hustle culture and, you know, when you raise a bunch of money and there's a whole bunch of pressure on you and, and those types of things that kind of happened. The second time was a bit more conscious where we were going through covid uh, you know, we had some challenges at the leadership level of our business and, and I had to kind of sell us through in a tough market time as well as, um, you know, some internal things and kind of get through that. Um, I consciously decided to let myself go into burnout to get the company through that. Um, the thing that I did, like the thing that where I stuffed up and quite frankly, the leadership of, of the company stuffed up as well was not giving me a reprieve after that time that I really needed to kind of rest and recover and, you know, not go at this extremely high velocity I needed to, to move through that, that phase, um, which is, I guess that the angle that I bring to what it is that I do now, um, you know, yes, I do the work of building a sales function uh, for small business owners, but I don't do it in a way 
that ignores the needs of the individual, you know, um, and, and the salesperson. I really like to have a sustainable lens to things. How do we set things up? So it's like, yes, we can achieve rapid growth. We can hit goals, those sorts of things. Um, but uh, yeah, how, how do we how do we do that in a way that works for all the humans that are involved in this so that it feels good, it's sustainable, maybe grows slightly less fast, but actually doesn't lead to burnout and top performers leaving and those sort of things. Wow, what an interesting background. Like I said, all the way from um, tennis, lo love of tennis and growing up with tennis all the way from there through that journey. I love so often when I'm talking to people, I love that that um, concept or that idea actually came out of funding the tennis. You, you actually started down this pathway because your passion and your love at that time was about the funding of the tennis. And then as you kind of lent more and more into it and then the tennis dropped off and the, the running um, a small business came, came along and then you had that fabulous opportunity with working with a founder and, and seeing it through all of the different stages. And then um, it is quite terrible going through burnout, but like you've said, you actually learnt from the first time and so you were conscious of it when the second time you chose, okay, I'm going to keep burning all the candles. Mm. Um, but then you learnt something else again that was, well, okay, even when I'm choosing to overload myself and go into burnout, I then still need to recognise that I need downtime afterwards. And now and, and today with what you're doing, helping um, people and organisations and founders themselves to recognise, well, um, there's that wonderful expression, of, you know, you can go fast, but you kind of go alone or go slow. I'm, I'm not probably saying it correctly, but it comes back to um, if if you want to be successful, it is a marathon in business. Mm. And it's not quite a, quite a sprint. You're not there to set it up and then it's done and dusted. You actually have to keep going and keep going. I, I'm interested then with this wonderful journey and evolution that you've had in your skills what would you say today that success means to you? What does success now mean? Success, success means do like setting up a life that's actually meaningful. Um, I was writing something about this the other day, just as far as like uh, you know a bit of a vision statement, I guess for for the business where I, I was really thinking about when I go and start working with clients, right? Like there's kind of the assumption when you come in with this sales lens that all you're talking about is hitting that next revenue goal, right? But it's like, what does that next revenue goal mean? You know, like I've, I've worked to and spoken with quite a few business owners who are like, this is the point that I want to get to. And I kind of don't want the headache of going to that next point. But this point is really meaningful because it allows me to X, Y, Z, right? Whether that's build a team so you don't have to do everything because, you know, you don't want to wear all the hats. You just want to do the stuff that you enjoy about the business. You know, whether it's getting to that next phase because leading a really meaningful organization that scales up is really important to you. Um, whether it's setting things up so that you can work on the business, you know, not full time, and that's really meaningful to you, right? It's like to me, success is is what's the thing that's actually the the next most meaningful thing to you, right? Like given where you're at, and you really feel that, right? When it's like when you add an extra, however much to your income, you know, that can feel meaningful, but it can also feel completely arbitrary if you don't know why you're making that extra money. Right. Or the consequence, you know, the surrounding consequences are like you've had to put yourself to burnout in order to hit that financial goal and you're feeling deflated and you're like, oh, I just kind of did this because that's what you're supposed to do is grow business. Right. Don't get me wrong. I find it really meaningful and enjoyable to grow business and build revenue. And I'm totally all about that. But to me, success is really matching the meaning to what it is that you're going after. And if that means that you grow just that little bit slower because you're able to do it by spending that bit of extra time with your family and kids or, you know, your partner or work on those hobbies that are really important to you. Like one of my, um, my very first client, actually, we tripled his revenues in six months. Um, and uh, he's now uh, doing a TAFE course uh, uh, and learning things about like, um, you know, techno music and different things and doing some creative writing and writing a novel and his business is still staying at those revenue levels right and it's like could he you know stay on not doing all those creative pursuits and like double down and like try and grow the business at an even faster rate and really scale it up it's like yeah 
but his business is still, he's doing, this year he's on track to do five times the revenue he was doing when we first met, right? And it's like, he's doing that while he's doing all these creative pursuits. He could go up to 10 times what we were doing, but, you know, why not do it a little bit slower and do that stuff that's meaningful, right? So to me, it's like success is that meaning and growth alignment, if you will. Yeah, and, and I think that um, it's wonderful to hear you talk about how it's not for success for success sake. It's actually success for the meaning. And um, mm. many, many people nowadays are actually working and living and, and focusing on having what they call a lifestyle business and, and by that, exactly what you talked about. So they want to be able to be successful and make money with what they're doing um, and so that's kind of a given part of it but it doesn't become the only part of who they are or what they're doing. Totally. And you know what? For some people, like going down that massive growth path is actually really aligned with them. I worked with another organization um, and we tripled, you know, their, their revenues. Um, and they, um, like, they just had this culture, like they've been in the tech world. Um, they've seen lots of high growth things, but they were building an amazing culture, something that really made a difference to people. And they had this love for the business, right? And this love for growth. And to me, it's like, that was really meaningful to them. And they've just kept on growing and growing and kept that growth momentum, but they're also connecting it to the meaning, right? So it's like, I'm not saying don't grow massively. That's amazing. But just make sure, check yourself that that's actually important to you rather than you're just getting caught up in the hype of it all. Yeah, I think that these are really important distinctions. Um, in fact, there's a wonderful cafe near where I live and um, they're a wonderful example of this again where they could open day and night and mm. make much more, double the amount of money that they're making. Mm. But the Italian owners, they have families, they have this, they have that, and obviously they don't want the headaches of opening day and night, so they just open for a period of time during the day um, and then close up and they go home to their families and their kids after school. And um, it's exact, It's a wonderful example of that where they make a lot of money doing what they're doing and they could double that, but they've chosen not to and, and continue to choose to not to because they don't want that because um, it's like running a second business, doing a nighttime restaurant as well as a daytime cafe. So... With these wonderful insights from um, going through, and it's wonderful to speak to somebody like yourself that's gone through the whole journeys of a number of different businesses from nothing to being successful, as well as helping people that already have businesses to increase their sales and grow. What do you think, because um, it, it's that mindset around um thinking of it as that marathon it's not a sprint it's a marathon so what sorts of things do you think that you yourself have learned and you've helped others to learn in terms of tips and suggestions for creating that successful mindset um i think it really comes down to like the foundational structures you put in place right like um and adjusting those as you get more information you know, where's, where's it all coming from? Like, are you, are you driving towards making as much revenue as possible? And that's, that's the outcome and, and, and setting up the business in that way or setting it up in a way that really feels like, I guess, I guess what grinds my gears, right. Is, is seeing all of this stuff out there on social media with people like, let's 10 X your business. Right. I'm like, man, that can happen. Right. But like, is that meaningful? Do these people need to, do they have like selling stuff to me, just like selling stuff like that just feels really like, oh, like, cool, great. Go and build a 10X, 10X your business, right? If you can do that, awesome. But that's not um, possible, appropriate for everybody, you know, out there in the market. Um, and I think that comes down to really like what, what I talked about initially, right? Like coming from what is meaningful to me and then, associating the structures you put in place. Like when I go and build um, uh, commission plans, right? So often I hear people go, this is my business goal. I want to grow to this amount of revenue. I'm like, great. How realistic is that? What, how are we chunking that down? What things are we putting into the mix, right? Because if you've got a whole bunch of capital to go and risk, if you've got a team that you can hire, if you've got money you can spend on, you know, scaling out marketing and sales in sync, you can do a lot of those things really quick, right? But do you have those resources? Is it realistic based on what's there? Because so often I've seen these kind of 
uh, targets or or um, things put in place that are very lofty and kind of ungrounded as far as like realistic based on you know what we've done so far, um, which can be very demotivating if you're constantly missing your goals, you know, because they're kind of way too stretched, you know. BHAG, big hairy audacious goals, you know, like we hear about that. And I'm like, awesome, let's go for those, but let's let's have a realistic pathway to get there. Let's put um, you know, the appropriate things in place that allow it to be plausible to get there without burning the candle at both ends and and putting us out to pasture, you know? I think you've raised some really wonderful um ideas there about how to create that that successful mindset. The first one being um with whatever you've uh, um, assigned meaning to so meaning could be you know i want a hundred dollars this week or i want to earn fifty dollars and have time with my family whatever that meaning is setting up that the, the point you were making about setting up the foundations to support that i think that that's a really important part many people i know in the business space um they start small they start by saying okay i'm going to take fridays off so that i can you know do my housework, spend time with the kids, whatever it might be. But mm. taking Fridays off is that, that first micro step to creating more of that balance in their lives when before perhaps they may have been working weekends as well as Monday to Friday. And so resourcing, you know, what sort of resources, what do you need to do to make all of that happening? I think the second part that you were talking about, which ties into the you know let's go get the 10x growth and and if people watching um are going oh this doesn't relate to me because i work in a company think of it as more um i'm going to go and get that next great promotion and be ceo in two years kind of thing so the concepts relate even though we're talking about people in businesses so setting those goals of you know i want to be you know ceo but how realistic is it that you want to do it within three years? How, what kind of skills do you need? What kind of experience do you need? So it, it, it's okay to have the big hairy goals. I want to do 10X. I want to this, I want to that. I want to become CEO. But it's also important, like you're saying, to not get demoralized because what you thought might be um, in this culture nowadays of instant gratification, you know, something I do within a year or two, it may actually be something that takes maybe five years or ten years because once you work out that pathway you understand more of well I need experience in this type of role or in that type of role I need it this type of industry that type of industry I, I remember speaking with somebody one day who actually went off and he wanted to understand finance so he became a CPA now <laughs> that's a bit of an extreme yeah. but it's <laughs> it's that kind of working out for you once you've kind of worked out well this is what i'm giving meaning to these are the foundations that i need to build around it and so these are some of the steps that i need to meet some of those bigger goals mm. so these are fabulous steps that you're explaining here peter thank you and with yourself in your own journey um even with this understanding what is it that you think keeps you going when perhaps um you set these goals and, and you've you've done those first tickets. You you know the meaning behind it. You you've worked out the foundations that you need. Um and then you've worked out a pathway. What is it that helps you to kind of keep going on that pathway when things don't necessarily always go wrong? Or or like you said at the beginning, you need to readjust all of those assumptions that took you there. What keeps you going? Um what keeps you going is when it's the right thing for you um, is, is kind of my, I guess, a little bit philosophical take. If it's actually, if it continues to be meaningful, then you will continue to keep doing it. Um, and where burnout can occur is when you keep doing it because you think you've told yourself enough times that this is still meaningful to you, right? But actually, your body's screaming at you going, I need to be looked after. I need this. I need that, right? Like, it's quite interesting. I've been reflecting on uh, going from a time where I worked really, really hard, um, lots of hours, but I was nowhere near burnout. I was in one of the best like places of my life. And another time when I was working probably similarly hard, 
but I was in a horrible place. I was heading towards towards burnout. And it's like, hold on, I was putting similar hours in. What what's the difference here? Right. And it's like it was the it was the meaning of where I was heading, but it was also for me, one of my biggest drivers is other people around me are sort of treating me and working with me, right? When I went from a super supportive, you know, caring environment with there's a challenge, how do we work on it together to, oh, you're not good enough. That's why we haven't hit this goal. It's just a completely different environment. And for me, I know that one of my biggest drivers is is meaning in the people I work with and, and how we treat each other and those types of things, right? So it's like, even though I was driving towards the same goal, those two changes in you know, management, leadership, people around me, like massively change things. Um, and so I, I sort of feel like it's, it's a little bit of a, like you keep going and you figure it out if it's aligned. And sometimes it's about readjusting as far as like, ah, the goal is still similar, but the way I get there, the path I get there needs to change for me to keep connected to that, like essence of meaning and, and drive and inspiration um, versus like, Hey, this is actually sucking my energy out of me. You know, um, I actually had a, a really interesting part where after I left a sales leadership role, I, I decided, right, I'm going to go and buy a yoga studio. That's going to be my next thing. I went out of this sales world and it's like, and it didn't land. And I started doing some, you know, consulting sales work on the side, just as a little bit of a like pay some bills. And then I was like, actually, I don't, I love this sales work. This is actually really fun. I love building business. It's like, it's, it's almost like my mind is programmed to like, be curious about how a business operates and works right and i'm like wow i'm like loving this but i thought that i i, I wanted to go and build you know a, a yoga studio you know business right and it's like what what happened there and it's like the meaning came from those you know from being treated really well by getting great great results from my clients and loving the work and realizing that there were other things that sort of created meaning so i guess i guess it's a long way of saying like that there's something in that, how you're feeling about what it is that you're doing. Um, and I guess the real art is, is this something that means that I need to pivot? And there's a, there's kind of something in the mix that is like taking away from me loving what I'm doing. Um, or is it actually fundamentally a learning that this was something I thought would be awesome for me, but it's not, you know? And and that that kind of personal reflection at that point, I think is is something really important, but there's something certainly to be said from, I'm firing on all, all cylinders, like, because I'm loving it, not because I'm being pushed to do it and a longevity in that to kind of figure it out. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think it, it's one of those funny things where if people remember back to when they were kids um, or even today, you know, that there's times where time seems to be relative. <laughs> you know, you, you can be with some great friends and talk for five hours and it seems like two minutes has gone by and you can be working on something that you're, you're not really wanting to do and two minutes can seem like five hours. Mm. So that relativity of time that you've so beautifully described there in terms of what meaning you've aligned to it. And, and so um, other people talk about values and how aligned with your values it is. But I love how you also incorporated your environment and whether you feel supported or not with it and whether you feel inspired. Because I think that these elements of the pathway that you were talking about, you know, what's the meaning, what whether you're inspired by what you're doing or not, and also other people and whether you're being supported in it, tie into life. So that last part of what you were sharing around um, it changes and things can change over time and in different stages of life, etc. So reviewing what you were doing and, and going, well, in your wonderful example, I thought I needed to be doing something more health related. So I went off and did yoga. But while I was doing yoga, I realized, well, actually, I'm naturally very good. And my tribe of people is the sales tribe people. And so you felt like, well, I've checked it out but it's not necessarily where I, I could stay and what is my path in life as such because it didn't align with the meaning that was important to you. So I think that these um, elements about, you know, understanding your success, looking at what foundation and what meaning you give to it all, um, allocating 
the pathway to get there and then understanding what it is that keeps you going in that pathway and also reviewing I loved how you were talking about reviewing you know the, the situations where you're supported and where you're not supported and there might be times where you still really want to do something but you're not being supported by the people around you so mm. that can actually add even more kind of you know tie into the meaning have I been hearing what you've been sharing correctly there, Peter? Yeah, yeah. Like it's a really good, it's a really good articulation. Um, I guess, I guess the one thing that I would, I would, uh, just clarify a little bit is that it's like it wasn't even that like going in and running a yoga studio was wrong necessarily. It's just I felt like I needed that to find my meaning again, right? And I was like, oh, I found my meaning in this thing that I've been doing for like, you know, well over ten years um there's actually like that's actually cool like like I can actually keep going down this path and that, and that type of thing and maybe I you know buy into a yoga studio at a later point or, or do other health related endeavors at, at a later point but it was it was um you know going it's not I have to do this it's like actually I'm drawn this way um and there's a truth in that and I think for me the realization was that I loved business building and sales work but your love can be pulled away from you in the wrong environments so well put again and i really um one of the things i just love to quickly add there with that yoga beautiful wonderful yoga studio example is that sometimes you have to be doing something that isn't quite right to really go ah because because it's in doing what might not quite align that you mm. go oh actually that has helped me to work out this is what I really want to be doing. Mm. And and that's another wonderful tip for people because sometimes we can maybe classify that as, yes, it was a mistake or it was this or it was that. No, it wasn't. It was another thing that helped you to recognise, well, actually, no, that the, the sales and the B2B sales is more what I, my tribe, what I'm, what I'm in for, what I'm good at and what I'm happy helping people with. Peter, if people wanted to connect with you to talk some more and find out some more information, what's the best way of connecting? Yeah, definitely through LinkedIn. Um, so just have a look, Peter Solway. Um, you'll see Founder Sales Solution, my business, sort of posted all around there. Um, or check out our website, uh, foundersalessolution.com. Um, yeah, we certainly get involved, um, you know, and help support anyone who's looking to scale up their sales function or kind of, you know, figure out, you know, this B2B sales process, particularly small business owners i've been there I've done it i've lived it myself as the first sales hire as the as the founder um and so you know helping out with those challenges is a place where i find a lot of meaning right because i've i've lived through it <laughs> love to help others uh you know in the <laughs> you, you, same you, you, same sort of situations you've got the t-shirt and, and um the wardrobe i'm sure <laughs> and peter finally if you were to give some advice to your younger self what would that advice be there's nothing wrong with being a little bit patient, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was there a, a something uh, that sounds intriguing? What was it when you were younger that perhaps you weren't as patient with? Oh, well, like, you know, I wanted to build everything, do everything, you know, everything had to be quick, you know, like I had to reach all these levels of success really, really quickly. Um, and the thing that's allowed me to, find more meaning and joy as I've kind of got over on, uh, you know, gone through life and lived on my journey is that it's like actually going like 10 or 15% slower, seeing the whole picture um, prevents crashing and burning and helps you keep aligned to what's important. What wonderful advice again, going perhaps 10 to 15% slower so that you can um, see the whole picture. I think that, that that's fabulous. And, I think it's very meaningful today when people perhaps um, suffering from comparisonitis on social media to, mm. to really a actually go, well, um, they may be doing a role that I'd like to be doing, but my life journey is different and I have different experiences along that pathway. But, Peter, it's been such an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, Michelle. It's been a blast. Wonderful. And to everybody viewing, thank you so much again. We really love getting all of the amazing feedback and suggestions and comments and, and 
hearing how much you enjoy all of the different tips and suggestions that we provide each week. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great, be fabulous and be you. Thank you.